Or two, the country elected a racist leader who is linking to the Klan and white supremacists that they have a free pass to start a race war now. Or three, a mentally unstable racist clown with, with con man skills, mostly just lying, eviscerated the Republican primary field and won the presidency. He keeps doing crazy, impulsive racist stuff, but for some reason, the economy's going well, jobs are looking good, North Korea blinked, ISIS is on the ropes, and the Supreme Court got a qualified judge. It was mostly luck, right? Or four. The guy didn't offer to be your moral leader, didn't offer any moral leadership. The law and order applied equally. His critics cleverly and predictably framed it as being soft on Nazis. One of those narratives is less crazy sounding than the other. That doesn't mean the less crazy one has to be true. But normal stuff happens far more often than crazy stuff. And critics will frame normal stuff as crazy whenever they get the chance. You don't have to agree with all of this, but I just think it's very interesting. Number four. Oversized reaction. It'd be hard to overreact to a Nazi murder or a racist marching in streets with torture. That stuff demands a strong reaction. But if the Republican agrees with you that Nazis are the worst and you threaten to punch the Republicans for not agreeing with you exactly the right way, that might be an oversized reaction. Number five and lastly, the insult without support numbers. When people have actual reasons for disagreeing with you, they offer those reasons without hesitation. Strangers on social media will carefully check your facts, your logic, and your assumptions. And when you start to out on an attack, they offer no reasons at all. It might be a sign that people in the mass hysteria bubble don't understand what is wrong with your point of view, except that it sounds more sensible than their own. For the past two days, now remember this was written uh, uh, on August 17th shortly after Charlottesville. For the past two days, I've been disavowing Nazis on Twitter. The most common response from people who agree with me is that my comic strip sucks and I am ugly. <laughs> the mass hysteria signals I described here are not settled science or anything like it. This is only my take on the topic, based on personal observation and years of experience with hypnosis and other forms of persuasion. I present this filter on the situation as the first step in dissolving the mass hysteria. It isn't enough. A more persuasion is coming. If you're outside the mass hysteria bubble, you might see what I'm doing in this blog as a valuable public service. If you're inside the mass hysteria bubble, I look like a Nazi collaborator. How do I look to you? Very, very interesting and very well said. I'll be right back. Mark Levin. Why do you listen to Freedom 970? I think it, it makes me more aware of your community. Oh, the news. I think it's to be uh, aware of well, what's going on. Local news matters to me. It's more locally oriented, which I like. Well, how do you make a decision unless you're informed? News about how we're solving the problems that face us as Americans today. That's the day that's the